So the grades for those exams are online if you, if you can't figure out the grade. So this, this chart up here shows in orange the grades for this exam um, in the order from highest to lowest and then the blue is the exam one score for the same student. So what you can kind of see from that is a trend of whether or not a student went up or down on the scores. And so the highest score, the two highest scores on this exam were 115 and 114. If I remember correctly, there was a few bonuses, right? There were two bonuses, yep. And I, which one was it? Number, I believe it was number 11. I may not have taken off on. I may have had, um, done that as a bonus. I don't remember, it was before spring break when I graded these, but uh, okay. The average, the average on the first exam was a 70, 70. The average on this exam was a 65. The standard deviation, which is how far apart the grades are spread out, was a 24, which means that there was a huge, pretty big spread in grades, that y'all aren't all clumped together like at the same place. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how to interpret this. We had three A's, two B's, three C's, four D's, nine F's. That's 13 people that did not get above a 70. 13. And we had uh, six, eight people get above a 70. That's a little concerning. So let's talk a little bit about the test. Uh, I mean, were you surprised to see what was asked or wasn't surprised. I mean, it was a, it was it was basically the homework. It was basically the homework. Um, I think it was just a lot of material, mm -hmm. and I think what 8.4 was a little bit rushed. Which uh, 8.4? The identity. The identity. Oh yeah. Well, we could spend an entire semester doing identities. It's. Yeah. I just want to know if you felt like when you got to the test, like, like, wait a minute, what is this? I wasn't, you know, like, this is not what I was expecting on the it test. It was to be expected. It was just, uh, I think it overwhelmed me. Yeah. Because it's so easy to make a mistake. And once you feel like you make a mistake, you feel like it's just going to go down. Yeah. There's a lot of information in this course, you know? And you have to get really comfortable with what's going on with these angles and circles and trig functions and these inverses and domain restrictions and all that. Like I was surprised at how many people really freaked out on that problem where I drew the little circles and asked you to like do the domain and range. Like I thought that was really going to be kind of a gimme problem. It's like, you know, sign. That one I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that was not like anything I had given other than stuff I'd done on the board. But I really thought that if you had come, I guess, expecting that inverse sine and inverse cosine would somehow be on this, you would know what the domain restrictions were. And that that would be almost uh, just a 
automatic. But so I, I'm just saying I was surprised that so many people didn't do well on that problem. Um, so um, I was required earlier this week, uh, earlier this week, I was required yesterday to send out an, uh, an alert to any students who I believe were under a 60 in their overall grade in the class right now. So if you got that automated, it's an automated thing that goes out that, um, you know, probably says something like contact your instructor about your grade, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, feel free to come by my office after class. Come visit with me if you want to talk about where you stand in the class, if you're concerned. Uh, remember that we are, we are only halfway through in terms of grades. We still have another exam and a final. We still have more quizzes. So, you know, if you have, if you have 100 average right now, there's still potential for you to come down. You don't want to, like, just try and coast the rest of the way. But if you're at the, the lower end, it's not necessarily over. We have to figure out. We would have to talk, all right? Um, if you have two, two grades, your, both exam grades are both very low, the trend, in, you know, the trend, unless something major changes in your life in the way that you're approaching the course, um, I don't often see people go from like, you know, 30 on one test, 40 on the next to like 92. It, it's happened, but it's just not. The times that it's happened, it's been because I've had, we've sat down, we've talked, we figured out like a plan of how to proceed through the course, you know. But uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, questions, comments, tests are up here if you want, need your test. All right. Do y'all want to talk about anything on the test? Any particular? Problems? Would someone turn on all the lights and uh, on that black panel, there's an off button, uh, bottom left. There you go. Thank you. And on, on for the lights. Thank you. So nothing in particular that you want me to discuss? Which one? 10? Ah, uh, the proving the identity. All right. So let's see here. I'm recording. This identity hung some people up. I mean, a lot of people had trouble with this one. Let's see, we had one. I'm assuming that most of you started with the uh, left side because it was more complicated. We're trying to show that this equals 4 tangent theta secant theta. That's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. So who, who, who wants to help me out here? Or you know what, did you try, did you do something on this or? Did you, no, okay. So someone wanna volunteer an approach here? Common denominator? Yes, so try to put these two together so get a common denominator. So how about, on this one we have to introduce one plus sine theta, one plus sine theta. And then on this one we have to introduce multiplication, one minus sine theta, one minus sine theta. Understand? And now let's do the multiplication. We have to do on the top two terms times uh, two binomials together here, two binomials together on the bottom, same thing. All right. So what happens when I multiply this through like that? 
what do I get? One plus two sine theta plus sine squared theta. That's what you get on the top there. And on the bottom, if you multiply these two together, it's a difference of squares. So you wind up getting one minus sine squared theta on the bottom. The middle terms cancel out when you do that. Now on this one, you have minus, and then you're going to have 1 minus 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta, all over the same denominator, 1 minus sine squared theta. That's, that's what would happen if you try and put them together. And now let's actually do that. Let's put these two together. So we're going to do, since they have the same denominator, we're just going to do this numerator, we're going to subtract each of these terms. So when I do that, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine squared theta. Then what? Minus, minus 1 plus 2 sine theta, two sine theta minus, sine minus sine squared theta. That's all over your common denominator of 1 minus sine squared theta. So that distribution of the negative sign is, is vital in this problem for things to work out correctly. Following? We good? Okay, so now the ones are gone, the sine squared thetas are gone, and I'm left with uh, how many of those sine thetas? Four. four, and I'm very happy to see the number four. Right? Okay, so I have four sine theta on top, and on the bottom, I have the 1 minus sine squared theta. Bless you. Yes? Hmm. Can't you change the bottom to cosine squared theta? Yeah, that's the next part that you have to see. This right here is the Pythag you can use the Pythagorean identity. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That's the big identity. So if I move the sine squared over to the other side, this is the, the identity cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So anytime you see 1 minus sine squared theta, you should be thinking that's cosine squared theta. So this becomes 4 sine theta over cosine squared theta, which is really 4 sine theta over cosine theta times cosine theta. I'm just trying to get you to see this. See, sine over cosine is what? Tangent. Tangent. And then if you have a cosine on the bottom and a 1 on the top, that's the same as secant. So if you want, you can kind of peel this apart and see that this is 4 times sine theta over cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta. That makes sense from here to here? And there's tangent, and there's secant. And that's where we were trying to get. Good? Okay. There may be other ways you could have done that one. Did anyone try to do something different that worked? No? Anything else? All right, let's, uh, let's get that back down to business. I, I did update all the grades. So if, if you still disagree with me on something I have on Canvas in terms of grades, let me know because I have gone through everything I have with the exception of your test. Okay. Well, we uh, are going to continue where we left off, which was 8.3. We were solving trigonometric equations. And it's been so long, right? That, uh, see how long it takes us to get back up to speed here.
when it came to solving trig equations, there were, there were essentially two types of, of solutions we could have. So this was eight, three trig equations. We have two types of solutions. All right. The first one was the general solution. And then the second one was on some interval. And do you remember which, which of those two I thought was the easier one to do? The general. The general. I, always, I think that the general solution is easier to find. But some people think that doing it on an interval is easier. So let's just do a warm-up problem because it has been a while, all right? So how about... 2 sine theta minus root 3 equals 0. And I want us to find the general solutions. So we're trying to solve for theta. We're trying to figure out what, what angles in here will make that true. So what we did was we isolated the trig function. We said that this kind of looks like a linear equation. right? It kind of looks like 2x minus root 3 equals 0, where you would just kind of move this over and then divide by 2, you get x by itself. It's kind of like the same thing. We're going to isolate the sine theta. So I would rewrite this like that and then divide by 2 and you get sine of theta is root 3 over 2 and now we go back to our knowledge of the unit circle we say okay sine was always the um, y. y coordinate so I'm looking on the unit circle and I'm saying where on the unit circle is my y coordinate root 3 over 2? 60 degrees, which is here. Or two pi over three right there. Those are the two places where your y coordinate is root three over two. So I have two different angles, right? And I cannot easily jump from one to the other. I can, I can go from here and I'd have to go all the way back around to get back to this one, or I could start here and go all the way back around. So I'm going to have two sets of general solutions. The first one is theta equals something, and the other one is theta equals something. So how about that first one? You said, I'm going to use radians. I'm not going to use degrees. What's that first angle? Pi over 3. This is pi over 3. That would give me one answer. How do I get all infinitely many of these? I have to add to that what? Plus 2 pi n. These are revolutions, right? Full revolutions that get me back to this point. That takes care of that one, right? Now this one, the only difference is where we start, right? Instead of starting at pi over 3, we're going to start 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And that is it. This is the general solution right here. This sound, uh, the look familiar? Like, do you remember doing something like this? Okay, let's let's do the same problem. So, so like this uh huh. Usually at this part, I just make the common denominator in my head, and I just get back up. Right, would, would it be still correct to put pi plus six pi n over there? That's fine. The question being asked is: Is it okay to go ahead and get a common denominator here? and put these together. That's perfectly fine. So put like a 3 on the bottom, 3 on the top, so that makes that 6, and that makes that a 3, and then you can combine them. 
Here, I'll just go ahead and write what you're saying. You're saying instead of that, do pi plus 3 pi n over, no, not 3, sorry, 6. And then this one would become 2 pi plus 6 pi n over 3. So just multiplying top and bottom of that by 3, top and bottom of that by 3, and then pushing them together. Just don't push these together, right? That's not 7 pi n. This is an 8 pi n. This is 2 pi plus 6 pi n. All right, so what if we do the same problem? We want to solve 2 sine theta minus root 3 equals 0 on the interval negative 2 pi to 2 pi. So the difference between these two problems is that this one was asking for the general solution and this one's asking for the solution on, the, on a certain interval. So how do you go about doing this? What's the difference? The restrictions. Okay, the, so how is that going to impact how you go through the problem? Are you gonna do any of this different? Yeah, I mean, you're basically going to do everything you did here, okay? Everything. But now you have to start plugging in values of n and then seeing what your answers look like and making sure that the answers live in here. Okay, so to do this problem, you're going to do everything you did over there until you get to this, these answers. Theta is, I'm going to go ahead and get the common denominator version of it. And then the other one is theta is 2 pi plus 6 pi n over 3. Okay, so we have our two general solutions, right? Now we start letting n be what n is supposed to be. What is n supposed to be? All the integers, right? So let's start with n is 0. If n is 0, what do I get for these, these two things? And someone said make a table. That's fine. If, if we want to make a table, we're going to have n is you know, 0, 1, 2. And then these are going to be our, our thetas. We have two sets of thetas, right? Two different sets to look at. So what happens if n is 0? If you plug 0 in right here, what do you get? 0. And that just leaves you with 5 over 3. Okay, if you plug 0 in here, what do you get? 2 pi over 3. All right, what if we plug in 1? One? 1 right here. You get 6 pi plus pi, which is 7 pi. 7 pi over 3, right? But that's not okay. Why is that not okay? It's not within the restrictions. It's not within the restrictions, right? I can only go as big as 2 pi. 7 divided by 3 is bigger than 2, right? So 7 over 3 pi is bigger than 2 pi. So I'm not going to include that answer. Understand? Okay. Now let's, let's plug 1 into this one. We need to check it. But it's going to be pretty obvious right away. We're going to get um, 8 pi over 3. That's too big, right? So I do not need to check n is 2 now. What I, what, pardon? Because I know it's going to be outside. I've, I've already kind of blown past the 2 pi. But I haven't gone the other direction yet. So I do need to change this and start looking at negative values of n. So what about negative 1 for n? What if I put a negative 1 right here, put it in here, what would I get? negative 5 pi over 3. Is that okay? Negative 5 divided by 3 is smaller than 2, so you're still good. Plug negative 1 into this one, what do you get? Negative what? Negative 4 pi over 3. Is that one okay? Negative 4 over 3 is still less than is still bigger than negative 2 pi. So now we try negative 2. Is there a question? Uh, the, two, the two thetas that we have, I'm trying to remember how we got those. 
One general solution for this one, one general for that one. So, so far, how many solutions do we have? Four solutions so far. Total, total. Okay, we have four solutions so far. Let's try n is negative 2. Is it going to work? You plug negative 2 in here, you get negative 11 pi over 3. And negative 11 over 3 is, is bigger than negative 2, so that's no go. Always check the other one, because this, this one could not work and this one could. You have to check them. So negative 2 into here, I think negative 10 pi over 3. Still too big. So that's it. We have our four solutions. So if I'm going to write these down, they are pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, negative 5 pi over 3, and negative 4 pi over 3. There are four solutions to that equation on the interval negative 2 pi to 2 pi. There are an infinite number of solutions if you don't restrict your, your interval. So, right, the general solution I think is easier. It's less work. Because to do this, you, you have to do that to do this, and then you have to do more. All right. Let's do another one. How about this? Cosine squared Let's make it 3 cosine squared of 5 theta mm. Sorry, I'm just thinking how I want this to work out. Some things about this equation that are a little different than this one is the squared on the cosine, right? That's, that's a major difference. Also, we have 5 theta as the argument of the trig function here. It was just theta, right? That does add a layer of complexity to the problem. So let's see if we can't do the same thing we kind of did here. We isolated the sine theta. So can we isolate the, the cosine squared 5 theta? Can we isolate it? Yep. What do you do to isolate it? Add 3 to both sides. Um, let's get the general solution here. Sorry, I didn't put that. Find general solution. OK, you said add 3 to both sides. Then what? Divide by 3 on both sides. And then what? Take the square root on both sides. Is that fair? That would get rid of the squared, wouldn't it? Yes? And you have to remember something, that when you initiate the square root, when you do that, what do you have to do? Plus or minus. You must do plus or minus. Anytime you come in with the square root on both sides, you have to do that. So the left side of this is going to become cosine 5 theta. And the right side is going to become plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just 1. So we get, we get plus or minus 1. That OK? All 
All right, so how is that five theta going to factor in here? Well, what we want to know is cosine of something, right? Forget that it's five theta. Just cosine of something has to be one or negative one, right? That means that this something has to be a certain angle on our unit circle. Let's see where, where is cosine one and negative one on our unit circle. So cosine is 1 here, isn't it? Because cosine is the x-coordinate, right? There's, it's 1, and then here it's what? Negative 1. Agreed? That's where your cosine function is 1 or negative 1. If this had just been plus 1 and not negative 1, I would only have the point, I would only have this point, right? But because of the plus or minus, I have both points. Yes? If you forget the plus or minus, you're only going to get to half the answers, right? All right, so what I need now is for my angle, not theta, 5 theta, to be equal to those points written as general solutions. So how, how can, you, uh, can you move around from one point to the next nicely? Can you jump? Like, can you jump from here to here and here, to, back and forth? How much do you have to jump by? By pi each time, right? Where do you want to start at? You can start at either one. It's up to you. So you all want to start at this one? Which would be what angle? Zero? Zero plus, how much am I going to jump by, you said? Pi? Pi in? See, that's where I'm starting, right? Start at zero, and then just start jumping by pi's. You don't need the zero there, do you? You don't need to write zero? I just wanted to stress that's where I'm starting, right? But because it's zero, really, this is just pi n. Could I have put pi plus pi n? Yes. Could I put two pi plus pi n? Yes. All right, so here's where I am. Five theta equals pi n. And I'm not done, because I'm solving for theta, so divide by five. There's my general solution. Pi n over 5. A problem like this um, is to kind of get you used to the idea that you may have to take the square root on both sides of an equation. And when you do that, don't forget the plus or minus. How about this one? How about... Let's go 5 secant of one third theta minus, oops, that's not a minus, that's an equals. Minus 10 equals zero. So I've introduced, I've, I'm using secant now. Secant of one third theta. You know, let's play the same game, right? Just kind of trying to isolate that secant. So how about we move that 10 over to the other side? I would move the 10 to the other side, then I'd divide by 5, wouldn't I? And then I'd get what? 2? Okay. Secant of 1 third theta equals 2. So you've got to know your unit circle here, but wait a minute, secant's not an easy one unless you remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine, right? So this is the same, what's that? Yeah, we can say this is the same as saying when is cosine of one-third theta equal to one-half? It's, re it's reciprocal. Not the reciprocal of this. This means, I'll just write it down, this is one over cosine of one-third theta equals two. 
That's what this line means. And that's 2 over 1. Then you could do like almost like a cross multiplier. Flip them both. If I flip this and flip this, I get this. Is that all right? So maybe that's help. that helps. When I'm, saying, when I'm looking at this here, I'm saying to myself, cosine of something has to be a half. So where on my unit circle is the x-coordinate a half? Where's the x-coordinate a half? Pi over 3 and... Right, the x-coordinate has to be a half. The x-coordinate has to be a half, which is here and here. Yes or no? Y'all look confused. Pardon? You all right? So what are these angles? I need, I need 1 over 3 theta to be equal to, let's see, let's start, start me out and then jump me back to this one, because I can't jump back and forth, right? They're not directly across from each other. So here, what? 5 over 3? plus 2 pi n. That's this one. How about this one? 1 third theta has to be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. If I'm trying to get theta by itself, what do I need to do now? Multiply by 3, right? Just multiply both sides by 3. So hit this with the 3, that with the 3, that with the 3. We should get theta is pi plus 6 pi n. And then theta is 5 pi plus 6 pi n. Those are my general solutions. Understand? Three here, three here, three here, three here, three here, three here. I can't tell if y'all are just okay with this or We're still, on spring break. still on spring break. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm getting that feeling. The reason, yeah, the reason why is because we are not dealing anywhere in the problem with the arc cosine, with the inverse cosine, right? Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So, Since we're just dealing with sine or cosine. That's right. Yep. The only time we ever have to worry about restricting the top half or bottom half or whatever it is, you know, the sides, mm -hmm. is if you're dealing with an inverse trig function. If it's not there, you don't care, right? That's good. Yep. Yeah. So look, um, here's, another, here's another thing I could say. Look, look at this equation right here. Sine of theta equals 1. Okay? Look at that equation right there. If you just go back and think about what the sine function looks like, right? It goes like that. If we're saying where is sine theta 1, we're trying to figure out where all these tops are, right? And arc sine is nowhere in this right now. So I'm going to have an infinite number of answers. And that's why what we do is or I would go to the unit circle. I'd say, where is the y coordinate 1 here? And that would be here. And so my answer would be pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So this, would, this is at pi over 2, right? And then a full rotation around. This is going to be that plus 2 pi, right? and then the next one, and then the next one. Yeah. And backwards, yes. You could still do... You mean... You multiply everything by 3, but I'm 
at the end I multiplied everything by 3 after I had this. You cannot do that by 3 and then add the 2 pi n. That's right. Let's see why. That's a great question. The question was being asked, could you have just like, like got that, multiplied by 3, and then just say, hey, add your full rotations afterward. So make this pi plus 2 pi n. Right? So let's just see. What would happen, uh, this is my picture, right? This is the picture right here. So let's just, let's just try what would happen if, um, if n was 1. If n was 1 right here in this answer, you would get 3 pi, wouldn't you? Now come over here into the original equation. Where is it? Right there? And plug in 3 pi right there. Or let's plug it in right here. Plug in 3 pi right there, and what would you get? You get 3 pi times the third, which is really pi. And is cosine of pi 1 half? No, because pi is over there, right? And cosine is negative 1. That, that doesn't work, right? Now, would n, would, um, n equals 1 here work? Well, there you get 7 pi, wouldn't you? If I replace it with 7 pi, then we're saying cosine of 7 pi over 3. So let me, let me count out. We had 1 pi, over two, uh, 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, 7 pi over 3. I'm, I'm at the right place. Cosine is 1 half. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. So always, always say, hey, the argument, the argument has to be this. Then, you know, there's the argument. Then clear it out. Clear out, multiply by 3 or divide by 5, whatever, whatever you need to do to isolate the theta. Okay, that's a good question. They're all good questions, right? Isn't that what I'm supposed to say when you say I have a dumb question? I'm supposed to say, they're all good questions. Hmm. Okay, let's try this. This one's going to look pretty innocent. Give me all the solutions to this. So right away you should you should have some alarm bells going off because you're thinking y coordinate, right? Has to be four nine. Whoa, four nines. I've never seen that on my unit circle, right? So we can't go off the unit circle here. But let's just think about where it might be, okay? It's the y coordinate, isn't it? And it's positive. And four ninths, it's close to a half, not quite. I'm thinking it's happening like somewhere around here and somewhere around here. I'm not quite sure what these angles are. Do you agree with that? Just right off the bat. The y coordinate has to be a positive number. Right about like that, like that. Something, yeah? It's first and, and second quadrants. But I'm not quite sure what that angle is. So what I'm going to do is use my calculator. I'm glad you're going for it. I'm going to use my calculator in the arc sine function to recover the angle. All right? So let's take this equation. We're going to take arc sine of the left, and we're going to take arc sine of the right side. The left side should spit out theta, and the right side is whatever your calculator spits out. And you need to know what mode you're in. Because your answer is either going to be in radians or degrees. So. Yep. So what do you what do you want? Radians or degrees? Let's do them both. Somebody give it to me in uh, degrees. What does it say? Arcs. 26 point 
26.38, let's just say 26.4 degrees. Good, good enough for you? 26.4 degrees? So that calculator just spit out this one, didn't it? Yes? The calculator did not and is completely unaware of the other one. This is, this is a very important thing here, all right? Because as great as the calculator is, there are some major limitations and you have to understand what you're doing in order to get the correct answer here, all right? So far, do you all agree that, that we've got this angle? And are you all comfortable with the fact that, just start the problem, I realized that there were two different angles? Okay. So that's that angle. I need to give a general solution, so I need to be able to come all the way back around to it. So what would I do here? What would I add to this? Full revolution, right? 2 pi n? I'm in degrees right now, right? So because it's in degrees, I need to write 360 degrees times n. So if your answer is in degrees, you're going to use 360 instead of 2 pi. Got it? Or if you prefer radians, then do arc sine of 4 ninths on your calculator in radian mode. And what do you get? It's going to be some decimal. 0 0.46. 0 0.46? And you just put 0.46, right? That's radians, plus 2 pi n. Now you use the 2 pi because you're in radians. That's the difference between these two answers. So please make sure you understand that. This angle here in blue corresponds to this answer or this answer. This is in degrees. This is in radians. Good? We're not done. That's only half the answers, right? Any questions? Yes? Why are there uh, two? I must have missed that. Why are there two angles on the circle? Okay. Sine is the y coordinate. Yes? On, on the unicircle, sine is the y coordinate. And if I'm saying that the y coordinate is about 4 ninths, Four ninths is some little positive number, right? Then if you look at your unit circle, where's your y coordinate a small positive number? Well, it could be over here, right? Or it could be over here. But it could, can't be down here because now you have a negative, right? Yes, everyone good on that? So small uh, positive y coordinate corresponds to two different angles. We've got one of them, the calculator. The calculator gave us this one. Why is the calculator being mean and not wanting to tell us this one? It's like hiding this one from us. Because arc sine, now, you, you now the calculator, arc sine can't look over here. All right? So the best it can do is spit one of them back to you. You have to have that deeper understanding that in this equation, you actually have another solution over here. So how am I going to get that solution? 180 minus 26.4. Think about it. Whatever this angle is, right, sweeps you up a certain amount to get that y coordinate. If I sweep up by the same amount this way, I should get the same y coordinate here. So what I'll do to get my second solution here is I will take theta is equal to, it'll be 180 minus 26.4 degrees. Right? That'll give you this one. 180 is here. Take away the 26.4. And then I will have to add a full revolution onto that. So what is 180 minus 26.4? 90 what? You could do 90 degrees to figure out. You could do 90 minus that to get that and then add it to 90. Yes, I mean, there are different ways to do it. I think the easiest way to get this angle, this angle right here, is to take 180 and subtract the 26. I think that's the cleanest way to get this angle. We're trying to get the angle from here to here. What is that? 153.6. 153 
degrees plus 360 N. Now, what if you did it in radians instead? Do you all have questions on this? Okay, or if you want to do things in radians, uh, theta will have to be equal to, so you have to play the same game. What's the measurement? What's the measurement of this angle right here in radians? 0.46, wasn't it? Okay, so I want to start here and subtract 0.46. What do I mean by start here? At pi. So I'm going to take pi and subtract 0.46. So pi, subtract 0.46, and then don't forget you have to add your 2 pi in at the end. So 3.14, whatever, 15 minus 0.46, what do you got there? 2.68. Plus 2 pi n is theta. So at the end of the day, you're either going to have these two answers together, or you're going to have these two together. All right? If you're doing everything in degrees, you're going to give me those two, and radians, those two. Nope, it's up to you. I actually think degrees is easier to work with here. It's one of the rare times that I actually think that the degrees is, is much cleaner. <clears throat> All right. I think we are in need of another one of these. All right. Let's do this. Tangent of 4 theta equals 3. Let's make it negative 3. It's too boring with all the positives in there. So tangent is the, on the unit circle, the tangent's not obvious. It's the, it's the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate, right? Isn't it? Is there anywhere on our, our common angles where our y divided by x is negative 3? It's not a common one. So if it's not a common one, then that means you're going to need your calculator. Now, can you tell me right now where this thing needs to be? Like what quadrant we would... If tangent, if tangent of something has to be negative, you're either going to be in... Where? Where's tangent negative? I'm either going to be here or here, right? So I can't be here and I can't be here. Do you all agree with that? So I've got to be somewhere. I'm just going to just randomly pick something here, right? And then the other one is straight across from it. Now, why is it straight across from it? This is, again, a kind of a subtle idea here. If I'm saying tangent of something is negative 3, that means the ratio of the y over x is negative 3. So whatever this y coordinate is, divided by the x coordinate should be negative 3. And same with here. The y divided by the x have to be negative 3. So the x's have the same value. It's just one of them is negative, one of them is positive. The y's have the same magnitude. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. So they are directly across from one another. So you know in the last problem when you're asking like, how did I know that there were two point two? Same thing here. To start this problem out, I realized that I'm going to get two, I have two points on my unit circle. One of them is in the second quadrant, one of them is in the fourth, and they're directly across from one another. Now I'm going to go try and figure out what it is. So I'm going to get my calculator out. 
I'm going to take arc tangent on both sides. Notice we have that four theta in there. That's going to create a little bit of an issue. Let's do this in degrees. Everyone do it in degrees on your calculator. What does the left side of this become? The left side. What? Four theta, okay. Four theta equals, now on your calculator, it's going to spit out a, an answer, and I'm willing to bet you money that it's going to be a negative angle. Yeah. And that's because it's only going to see this one. Because arc tangent is restricted between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it's only going to spit out a little negative angle here. It's not going to give you this one. So what, what angle does it give you? Negative what? Negative 71. 0.56, good enough. Degrees, right? So here's one way to think about it. If this is negative 71 degrees, right? Then this is the same angle right there, right? Those two are the same? But the good news on this one is I can jump straight across to this one, can't I? How do I, how do, I do that? I take that and to get from here to here, what do I need to do to that? Just add, add 180 n. Because I want to go, I, the other answer is directly across, right? Directly across 180. So I can just go jump, 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 jump. And notice I did that before I took care of the four, right? Before I did anything with this four, I came up with my, with my answer on my circle, and then the one, 180, uh, 180 degrees N is going to give me the other one on the other side, and I'm just going to jump back and forth between those. Now I come here and get rid of the four. Divide everything by four. <coughs> Theta equals, what's 71.56, negative 71.56 divided by four. Negative, negative what? 17.89 degrees plus, and then 180 divided by 4? 45. So 45 degrees N. There we go. That should give me every single answer possible. Do you believe it, it works? Just, I want someone to try it just to make sure that it works. Let's do N is 0 which means negative 17.89. I'd like for you to take 4 times negative 17.89 and then take tangent of it. And tell me what you get. I'm going to do it here also. Should get something really close to negative 3. Why will, why will we be off a little bit? We rounded, right? OK, I'm in degrees. Did it work or no? I got negative 2.9999 so we're good. Then if I let n be 1, this would be this plus 45, we plug that in, times 4, take tangent, we should get close to, I will do that, 40. Yep, I got it again. So you can see how we can use our calculator to solve these also. I think I want to give you a couple of problems to work right now. 